Hello everyone. Uh, it has been uh, two years that since I recorded my first uh, ArcGIS Pro tutorial. So it was during the COVID, where we used a browser-based version uh, that to run ArcGIS Pro. So now uh, we have the new version of ArcGIS Pro, which is 3.1.2, and um, I'm all, I decided to create a new tutorial where we are using the local version. So we will install the ArcGIS Pro on our own uh, computer and see that how we can use a new version of ArcGIS Pro to analyze uh, and also spatial data and also to create maps. Uh, so as you can see that I already logged in with my uh, James Madison University account. So no matter what account you have, so you can log in so that can also activate your license of using ArcGIS Pro. And now today we're going to see that how we can create a new project. So this is our very first lab. Uh, so I already started ArcGIS Pro and on the top, you can see that we can create uh, the uh, project by using different templates, so like maps, uh, catalog, global scene or local scene. And uh, up beneath that, you can see my recent projects that I created earlier. So today we're going to start with a map project. So let's select map. And then uh, we need to decide where we are going to save our data. So uh, for my lab, so I use uh, OneDrive so to store all the data because it is much easier that once I restore data in OneDrive, it will be synchronized to the cloud. Um, all you can use Dropbox. Uh, so and we switch to different computer. Uh, you can log into your OneDrive and your data will be there. So I'm using OneDrive as a storage for my data. So I also created a new folder uh, on my OneDrive, which is Geo uh, 215 demo. So I'm going to use this folder uh, to store all my data and all my project files uh, that I created in ArcGIS Pro. So let's go back to ArcGIS Pro. So this is my lab one. And as I said, we're going to uh, store the data in, Arc in my OneDrive folder. So I click here. So the OneDrive folder is normally uh, under your username folder. And here you can see my OneDrive folder, which I use my GMU OneDrive folder. And I choose uh, the folder that for this class. And I also want to create a new folder for this project. So I hit OK. And now we are creating a, a new project. Uh, so every time when we start a new project in ArcGIS Pro, so we will see a base map uh, that in the, the middle region. So uh, you can use your mouse, the middle part of your mouse to zoom in and also zoom out. And here you can see that this is a scale. So uh, if you zoom in or you zoom out, uh, the scale also changes. And on the left side, we have this contents window where you can see uh, the current data that you have or each layer that you have. So right now we have two layers. One is a word map and also one is a word field sheet. So if you, want to uh, if you want to show just one layer, you can just uncheck and also make uh, the, uh, the another layer. So you will be able to see the layer that beneath that. Uh, if you want to see view that a layer on the top and you can just select the layer that uh, check the layer on the top so that's how you can decide which data will be displayed on the right side uh so normally you will see your catalog so uh, so go to catalog and here we have several options so the first one is a project where you can see your maps so currently we have only one map so that is exactly this map that we are looking at uh, you can also have your toolbox so that for your lab. So right now we don't have any tools like in our toolboxes. Uh, so later we will uh, learn that how to create those tools. Uh, we also have a default uh, database so where we can store our data locally. Again, right now we don't have any data yet. Uh, we can also have our default styles uh, folders. So this is a lab one folder. Uh, so you can see here again, we have our database, Dropbox, etc. 
And we also have the locators. So locators are used to for the geocoding. Uh, so by default, we have ArcGIS World Geocoding uh, Services. And this is very accurate and also very expensive. So this is not a free service. The second one uh, is a free service and depending on how your organization purchase those services. So the locators may look like different, but just remember that the access wording geocoding service is not free, but it is highly accurate. Uh, again, on the catalog, we can also go to portal. Uh, so here we can see we have my personal content. Those are the contents that I created before and also I uploaded to ArcGIS online. So uh, those are data that are not stored locally, but those are data stored on ArcGIS online. Uh, so if you put your mouse to any of those data set and you can see that what the type of the data set and this is, for example, this is a dashboard, and you can see owner, so that is my GMU ID. And also that's the location. So if you click this URL, and you'll be able to see the description of this data set on the web page. Okay, so uh, those are all my data sets that I created and also uploaded to ArcGIS Online. Uh, the second um, tab is where if I have any data set that I uh, favorited. So right now I don't have any data that have been favorited. And this one is that if I join any groups and those are data that are shared by those group members. And my organization, so those are the data that are shared by the people that are in the same organization. And in this case, those are shared. My organization is my university, James Madison University. So you can see all the data are shared by the people that are in GMU, so James Madison University. Uh, this is ArcGIS Online portal. So those are the data that are shared by all of the ArcGIS users. So it can be any users as long as they have an ArcGIS account. And so they can publish their data uh, to the ArcGIS Online. And if you send that data to be public, and you will be able to search and also use their data set. And the last one is called a living adverse. So this is a, a data set where normally the data are maintained by S3. So if, for example, the first one, you can see the owner is S3. So, uh, so those data I would consider with relatively high quality. So that is definitely better than ArcGIS Online because for the ArcGIS Online, and portals, anyone can publish their data set. However, living atlers, uh, so those are data that are maintained, uh, most of the data are maintained by an S3. And next, we have our folders that in, in my local computer. Again, you can see here, if I go to my uh, username, my OneDrive folder, and you can see there's a lab one uh, folder that is created for this uh, project. And if I expand, you can see my database, my top boxes, and etc. All right, so that is a catalog. And on top, those are different menus. For example, uh, the project, maps, uh, insert. This is where we can perform analysis, uh, spatial analysis. Uh, we can define our views. Uh, we can edit our data. And those are the speed of the analysis for image data, RAS data. Uh, and also this is how you can, uh, once you have a map that's been created, uh, or you can publish your map, or you can publish your data, or you can print uh, your map. And depending on the, the specific layer that you selected, so we may have additional menu uh, on the top. So for example, if I click the first map, I, you can see I have this vector tile layer where we have the options and for this layer only. And if I click the second data layer, the so word field option, and I have the tile layer. So uh, depending, sometimes depend, depending on the data that you selected, and you have new options on the menu bar. 
All right. Uh, so now let's first let's see we are going to find out uh, uh, Harrisonburg City. So let's go to the map, and then we are going to use the locator function so that we want to identify the uh, Harrisonburg area. So I click locate, and now you can type Harrisonburg. Okay, I just select Harrisonburg, Virginia. And now you can see we have two options, two results. And the first one is a result at BioArxis uh, World Geocoding Service. And the second one, result provided by the BGIN uh, service. So if I select the first one, and now you can see here, this is Harrisonburg. And this is the second option. So you can see both services provide, provided relatively the same results uh, so you can choose any of them and so let's say i will use the first one so at the downtown of harrisonburg and i will click a uh, close the locator tool so i close that one and now i go back to the catalog all right so now i am looking at the harrisonburg downtown harrisonburg uh, and that's from this uh, topographic world map uh, you can see here, right here, you can see there is a 3D effect. That actually is the purpose of using the word health sheet. So if I uncheck word health sheet, uh, we don't have that 3D effect. Okay, so that's the purpose of the word health sheet. Uh, next, let's say we want to remember uh, the current view of the Harrisonburg. So we can uh, go ahead and also create a bookmarker. So I click here. And I say I want to create a new bookmarker. And then I give it a name, and I just call it Harrisonburg. Okay, so the bookmarker will allow you to go back to this current existing view. So for example, if you zoom out, uh, if you look at Richmond, and then you want to go back to your previous view, and you can just go ahead and go back uh, to Harrisonburg by using this bookmarker. Okay, so now I come back to Harrisonburg. All right, uh, so now let's look at the properties of the data set. So here uh, in this current map, we have two layers. One is a word map, and one is a, a word field sheet. So if I right click any of those layers, and I'm able to do like, I can make a copy, I can remove, and I can uh, group multiple layers as a group. Uh, and also uh, other uh, options, so which we'll talk later this semester. So, but today I want to show you the properties. So if I look at the properties of the work map, and you can see we have the general information, and if we go to the source, and we can see something that we mentioned during the lecture. So for example, we can check the spatial resolution or spatial reference. So uh, we have the TCS projected coordination system, so that's the TCS of this data set. And we can also check the GCS, so that's the geographic coordinate system, so that's the GCS of this data set. Okay, and we can also look at the properties of the second layer, uh, so that the word health sheet. And this time, so if you look at the metadata, okay, so the metadata is the data about the data. So it has a very brief introduction about the data. So for example, the title, the tags, which can be used helpful when you search your data, and also we have a summary, so the purpose of the data and also the description of the data. So those are also something that is very important and also useful. All right, and we are talk about the other options later this semester. So next, let's say we, we want to download some data. So uh, we, we, just, we don't want to just look at the symmetrical or topographic map or the word field, uh, word field sheet. So let's go to the portal. And let's go to living editors. And we're going to download a data set from living editors. Before we download, uh, let's bring up the filter. Uh, so this time, let's say we want to go to category, uh, boundaries, 
uh, and also we want to see these administrative boundaries. Uh, once we enable that filter, so let's search USA counties. Okay, so we want to use the USC, the boundary of the USA counties. So we're going to use this one, USA counties generalized boundaries. Again, you can see the owner is Asri. Uh, so uh, which means that normally we can trust the quality of the data. And uh, if you if you want to check the details about data set, and you can just click this URL, and that will bring you to the, the page of the data set, the ArcGIS Online. Okay, and uh, you can see that you can trust the data set that you recommend the S3. Uh, you can be used more the descriptions of the data. Okay. Uh, so to download or to view the data in our map, so it's very simple. So we just click the data and also we just drag the data set to the map. And I just release. And now you can see that uh, on the left side, we can see so we have this layer that we added to our uh, contents window. And also if we zoom in, and we can see so we have on the boundaries of all the counties that in the United States. All right, so let's say we want to go back to Harrisonburg. We want to look at the boundary of the Harrisonburg. So uh, we can go back to Bookmarker. We, we select Harrisonburg. So now we can see this is the boundary of the Harrisonburg city. Okay, and actually because this is a vector data set, uh, so it has attributes. So we can actually explore the attributes of this uh, vector data set of this polygon. So if we go to map and we click explore, okay, and you can see we have a few options. Do you want to explore the topmost layer, baseball layer, or flat ball layers, etc. So by default, let's say we want to explore the topmost layer. So that which means that we want to explore the census data set. USA census counties. And then I click the left button of my mouse. Okay. And now I have this pop up window, uh, which we can customize later. Uh, so you can see it is Harrisonburg City. And you can also see that we have the FIPS, which is 51660. Okay. 51660. So let's remember this FIPS. All right, uh, next. So see, in this case, we are only interested in Harrisonburg. So we don't want the other counties. So we want to fill out the other counties. Uh, so there are several ways to do that. Uh, one way that we're going to do today is that we're going to make a selection. Uh, so again, make sure that the counties is being selected. So once the county being selected, you can see we have a lot of other options like feature layer, labeling, and also data, etc. Uh, so to make a selection, we go to the map. Again, we make sure that the county uh, layer is being selected. We want to select by attributes. So let's say select by attributes. And then we have this a window pop up. So we want the counties as input feature. We are going to create a new selection. And here we want to see we want to select based on the FIPS. And if you recall that FIPS of the Harrisonburg is 51660. And hopefully I'm right. So let's see validate. So that's valid. And let's apply. All right. So uh, so now you can see Harrisonburg has been selected. You can see it's highlighted boundary of Harrisonburg. So now we can close this window. Uh, so now Harrisonburg has been selected, but we want just keep, we want only keep um, the selected feature. Okay, so to do that, we again, we make sure that this county layer is being selected and we go to data. Okay, so you can see this data will only show up when uh, the county is being selected. So if you connect the map, 
and there's no data option. So again, make sure Harrisburg, uh, the, the county is being selected. We go to data. And now we have an option that called create layer from selection. So we just click that button. And now we have another layer being added, uh, which is actually the Harrisburg layer. So that let's rename this one. So let's just right click and see if we have the rename option. So let's go to uh, properties. And here in the name, let's type Harrison, Harrisonburg. Okay, Harrisonburg, and click OK. So now you can see the name has been changed. And now we can remove this county layer. So let's right click. And we we want to remove this layer. So now you can see we only have the polygon for the Harrisonburg city. Okay, uh, so now we have part of the Harrisburg city. And now if we right click uh, this layer, of course, you can check the properties, uh, etc. But because this is a vector data, so we can look at the attribute table. So if we open the attribute table, um, because we, hold, we have only one polygon, so there's only one record, which is Harrisburg city. Uh, we have state name, uh, FIPS, total population, uh, etc. Okay, so that is how we can check the attribute uh, table of the of the vector data. All right. Uh, next, so let's say we want to change uh, the color of this uh, Harrisonburg. So because this is just a boundary, so we just want to give it. Uh, a red color uh, for the boundary. Uh, so again, make sure that uh, the, the Harrisonburg layer is select, selected. And then we go to feature layer and we're going to change the symbology. So you can see you can also change uh, other attribute like transparency, etc. So let's say we click the symbology and now we have symbology window. And uh, let's say we want to have uh, outline color. Uh, we just want to show the outline. So we go sim symbol. And let's say we choose a black outline. So now you can see that we just show the outline of the Harrisonburg city. Uh, so there is no color that inside of Harrisonburg. And next, we want to change the color of this outline. So we want to use as red. So we go to properties. And for the color, let's say we choose red. And the next, let's say we hit apply. Okay, so this may not be <laughs> very red, so it's like orange. Okay, that's fine. So, so now we just change the color of the Harrisonburg boundary. So that's how we change colors, etc. All right, so now we have a very nice 2D map that shows uh, the base map. Uh, we also we have the hill shape uh, feature being enabled. And now we are looking at the boundary of the Harrisonburg city. Uh, so this is a very nice 2D map. Uh, now in ArcGIS Pro, so we are also able to see the 3D map. So if we go to view, and if we go to convert, and we can convert this 2D map into a 3D map to convert either global scene or a local scene. So because we are looking at a small city, so let's convert this 2D map to a local scene. So let's go to local scene. And now we are converting. Uh, so now you can see we have two maps. One is a 2D map and another is a 3D map. So we are still loading the 3D maps. Okay, so here we go. So now we have the, this uh, 3D map. Uh, so it, it still looks like a 2D. Uh, so let's see if we click uh, this first person navigation. Oh, sorry, if we expand and go to first person navigation. And uh, if we click our mouse, select the needle circle, and then we rotate. Okay. And now we are able to see this 3D effect. So we can see the mountains right there, and we can see the boundary of Harrisonburg. Okay, 
so that's pretty much about uh, today's lab. Okay, uh, so we learned that how to create a project. We talked about the catalog, uh, where uh, how our files are organized, like database, Dropbox, uh, the different portals. Again, Living Atlas is a great resource where you can download a lot of high quality data. And also, we talk about how the data are organized as different layers. So, uh, if you uncheck those layers here, and your layer will not be showing up in the map. And also, uh, we talk about different menus, especially like in the map menu. So, how to make a selection, how to create a book map, a bookmarker. And of how to use a locator uh, tool, and also depending on the layer that you selected, and you may also have different options. For example, you can change the symbology. Uh, uh, you can also make a selection on the, and also create new layers. Okay, so finally, you can see you can save your project. Okay, so now your project has been saved, and you can close ArcGIS Pro.